Hello fellow humans and welcome to the Madhouse. I'm Josh and today I'm going to do another book review. This was again filmed five minutes after I finished the review of Room. Live with it. <laughs> if you're interested you can watch my review of Room here. I really recommend you pick that up and see the film. The acting in that film is marvellous. The book I want to talk about today is Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Aliere Sainz. I hope I'm saying that name right, I apologise if I didn't. I decided to pick this book up last summer after it was doing the rounds on booktube and I heard so many good things. But there were only a few people who mentioned this now. It is an LGBTQIA plus book. I would rate it at four and a half out of five stars, only just missing out on the five for a reason I'll come to in a moment. The book follows the story of Ari, or Aristotle, and Dante, two friends, two Mexican-Americans who, where do they live actually? I'm not sure, somewhere in the States. Well, obviously if they're Mexican and American, geography isn't my strong suit. And it explores how they grow and develop as people, how their friendship changes, how, in the case of Ari, what well, it can be difficult living in a family torn apart both by war and by a family member's incarceration, that's the word I was looking for. I've mentioned before that I am not sentimental in the slightest. I don't cry unless there's exceptional need for it. I don't get all soppy or mopey, but this book, it gets inside your chest and it pulls, it tugs things. It, it moves your organs around to where they shouldn't be. It tears your world inside out. This book breaks you. It, it, oh, you would not believe how affected I was by this. I mean, I could see so much of myself within both Ari and Dante. Ari because he's a bit of a loner who's never felt like he fit in and well prefers to spend most of his time alone and Dante because I was always the crazy intellectual who nobody understood. Now maybe that's the entire point that you're supposed to see aspects of yourself within each of them. It worked if that's what was happening and extremely well so. The two characters are utterly, utterly believable. Entirely possible circumstances. The sorts of bereavements one might expect. There was one thing I didn't quite understand really, is why Ari and Dante are called Mexican-American. Because they both said that it was their grandfathers who were from Mexico. Neither they nor their parents are Mexican. So why are they Mexicans? It doesn't make sense to me. I myself am English. If you go back far enough, say, to my great-grandmother, there is the, my family is Welsh, but that doesn't make me Welsh now. If you go back even further, my family is Scottish, and that doesn't make me Scottish now. Go back even further than that, you get French knights. That does not make me a French knight. I mean, there are no French knights anymore, but you get the point. It doesn't make me French or nobility. So, I don't understand this American, or maybe it's a tendency that happens all over the place, to identify as something which one isn't. You see it all the time with, say, Italian Americans. I have a friend who's perhaps stereotypically so, named Vinny, who is Italian American. He has never been to Italy. His parents have never been to Italy. His grandparents have never been to Italy. His great grandfather moved from Italy to New York when he was about, ooh, three years old. So, even his great-grandfather cannot claim to have lived in Italy, really. So, why still do it? There must be some deeper aspect of identity that escapes me. If you understand it, please let me know. I must say, I absolutely adore Dante's parents, especially his mother. There's something intriguing about her, and she's incredible, and I, I think pretty much all of you will grow to like her, although I know some people have a bit of a soft spot for Ari's mother as well. She is an entirely different kind of enchanting and she's lovely. The main reason this didn't get 5 out of 5 stars is because I was spoiled a little by being told that this was not LGBTQIA+, because that is not the spoiler, but that it's the romance. Because 
I can understand why some people might feel that it's a spoiler saying this. There is very little evidence to support the idea of there being a romance until the last few pages. But because I knew it was all the way through, I was seeing lots of hints for it, which was interesting. And I appreciated it, but I would have liked the opportunity to go in blind at least once, I feel. And this was taken away. Just to clarify, sexuality is not a spoiler. But in a story where romance is the integral part of the film and whether or not it's going to develop, the romance part is, so feel free to tell everyone that this book is as queer as can be. But I recommend maybe skimping on the romance part of it, just so people can discover that. Again, I hope I was not too incoherent with this review. The book was marvellous. I urge you to pick it up. It is beautiful on the inside as it is on the outside. And I believe that the author is currently in the middle of writing a sequel, for which I am very excited. Let me know if you've read the book, if you have any particularly strong feelings about it, and are you looking forward to the sequel? Until next time, tatty bye!